Hello, I'm John Stossel. This is 2020 in touch. On the surface, they seem to be a perfect family, a lucky family, well-to-do parents, two great sons, one just graduating from college. But all that changed within seconds one night when an intruder gunned down all of them. Here's Mary Fulgeniti. You were raised by a loving family, but you still decided to kill them. I did. 23-year-old Bart Whitaker directed a plot to kill his family on the night they all went out to celebrate his graduation from college. You're smiling in the photo. This is like a half hour before your family's going to get gunned down. What were you feeling in that photo? I was about as close to numb as a human being can get, I think. Someone just shot a neighbor. Get over here. Play acting the role of hero, Bart runs through the house to the kitchen just as the shooter is about to flee. He said he almost caught him. He grabbed him. But the shooters turned, fire, and he jumped sideways and got hit in the left upper arm. I do remember getting shot. I do vaguely remember making the 911 call. OK, where have you been shot at, sir? Oh, in my arm. OK, Bart, who shot you? I don't know. I pull my weapon, and I start running through the yards to get to the Whitaker house. First on the scene, Sugarland police officer Phil Prevost finds 19-year-old Kevin Whitaker dead where he fell a single bullet in his chest. Trisha Whitaker also dies of a single gunshot wound soon after she's airlifted to the hospital. Miraculously, Kent Whitaker survives, being shot only in an arm. Also wounded, Bart makes for a convincing fourth victim. You had yourself shot as part of this plan. Was that your idea? Yeah. It was to distance me from the guilt, but also, I think on an internal level, it was me realizing that there was no way that I could come out of this physically unscathed. So you were trying to throw the cops off in your mind. Yeah. And it works like a charm. Homicide Sergeant Marshall Slot thinks he's looking for a burglar with bad timing. We called out tracking dogs that night in an attempt to track the shooter. The dogs pick up a scent in the house and follow it outside to a dead end. Investigators find no suspect fingerprints at the scene. But DNA analysis comes back negative. It seems the killer made a clean getaway. It seemed like every piece of evidence that we collected, we ran into dead ends left and right. Lying in his hospital bed, Kent Whitaker is torn between emotional extremes. He wants revenge, but he also prays, asking God to give him the strength to do the impossible. Forgive whoever was responsible. I had this warm glow flowed over me just instantly, and I looked at my heart and I realized that desire for revenge had gone. The thought that it might be his own son that he would need to forgive was the furthest thing from Kent Whitaker's mind. When he told me that he had forgiven the shooter, I was shouting inside, well, what if that, what if that's my fault? And I, of course, I didn't have the courage to say anything at the time. With the investigation hitting dead ends, Bart has good reason to believe he had gotten away with murder. You can see that story this Friday on 2020 at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central Time. I'm John Stossel. For all of us at 2020, we're in touch, so you'll be in touch.